Hello, everyone, and welcome in once again to the Behind the Bench Coaches Show presented by Mike Hostelow Law. Thanks for joining us. Joined by River Dragons head coach Jerome Bichard. And our special player guest this week is Michael Greco. Fellas, thanks for joining us. Looking forward to talking some hockey. Thanks for the coffee, Tom. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we can thank PMB Broadcasting. Oh, thanks. Thanks, boys. Yes, absolutely. Grex, how you doing? I'm pretty good. How are you? Can't complain, man. Nobody listens. So... <laughs> Like, you'll figure that out if you haven't already. Or though maybe you figured it out complaining to her effort to. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. They they don't like me, so they don't they, care for me. So I just kind of stop now. They definitely don't listen to you. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, I was, I, I asked Scott uh, at one point, Scott Hockey Brand. I said, Scott, did the player ever win an argument with you? And he's like, no. <laughs> just pretty much that simple like even if you know you're wrong you're still right because you're the ref so that's just how it goes yeah, it doesn't change often no never no it really does not but uh that said i mean you know we're we're kind of coming down the home stretch here we want to talk about last weekend what's coming up this weekend a big road trip coming to motor city also we're going to get into talking about the legends game coming up on saturday the 18th st patrick's day on the 17th we're going to find out where baby grex started playing hockey we're going to talk about that a little bit later on as well so just preparing you now all right i'm Get ready yeah. okay uh let's let's dive in though by talking about binghamton a couple overtime games uh and boom i'll let you start out here it's uh you win one you lose one yeah <clears throat> you know what uh positive negatives on the weekend i mean positives were i think we had a well we played really or Let's go with the negatives first, and we'll come back with the positives. Negatives, I thought we played really loose. I don't know if, uh, um, obviously, Friday night, uh, ice conditions, fog. Um, really, there was no flow within the game whatsoever. It was really choppy, and uh, ice was heavy. <coughs> Greg's is a uh, carrying carrying a good uh, pound of. Uh, a good a good amount of poundage on them, and you know what? I mean, even the light even the light guys, I mean, looked heavy in this and that. So, um, not a whole lot of flow. Uh, slow start. They got going. Crawl back in. Huge huge uh, overtime win. Um, positive. We didn't stop. Kept on kind of going. Corrected a few things, but we still were playing a little uh, a little loose or whatever. And then uh, you know. Huge, entertaining game. I mean, entertain as heck. And again, we talk about. I talk about it all the time. I love this league. Um, as far as fan wise, I don't think you can get anything more exciting than what we went through this weekend. But there's so many peaks and valleys within the game and with the year. Consistency, play well, fall asleep for five minutes, uh, wake up, you know, all that stuff. So, um, you know. Uh, Another positive, I think. I think uh, for the most part, we, we grew as a team. I did a little bit of an experiment on <laughs> on Friday night, little little snap show. I had some guys uh, uh, for whatever reason wasn't happy with decisions or whatever. I don't even know at that point. I don't even know what the heck he was complaining about. But I'm like, oh, okay, guys, I'm done. You guys seem to know all the answers. I want you to take control of the bench. I'm not telling a person who's going out, who's going out. We're not matching. You guys figure it out. And I just stood there. <laughs> How long did that last? It la ten, did you ten minutes. Yeah, yeah it was. Something it was. Like that, yeah. it, it was basically we were down two to one with a power play, and I was fed up. I'm like, hey, you guys call the power play out backfired because they scored on it we scored on the power play so apparently <laughs> apparently i'm wrong so um you know and then you know petro comes up hey coach we need you don't do this i'm like no this is a this is a process that i'm gonna go through you guys you guys need to figure out what's more important your personal crap or whatever or we got to figure out how to come together and we did that and grex was a big part of that and uh, it was it was uh, it was a good it was a good thing. That's uh, you know it's interesting because no no one would know that in the stands, right? No no one would have well, any idea. And then and then you know what you know I listened to the NHL Network on the way over, and you know uh, John Cooper I think benched uh, the big line in he Tampa did, and or lost whatever. to Buffalo. And yeah. then you know 
I mean, they do it in the NHL. I that's not how I coach. That's not how I coach. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and you know, I don't know. Uh, I, you know, at the end of the day, it's my job to reach these guys, however long it takes to get them to do what I, what. I think we need to do to win, and you know, it, it, hockey is, in my opinion, is fairly simple. You skate, you shoot, and you're physical. That wins games. Greg, so what were your thoughts going through that on the bench, without <laughs> without naming names? If you don't have to it incriminate a, it was anybody, it's the first time for me. That's for sure. Um, I had something similar actually when I played uh, lacrosse when I was younger. We were. Uh, Went in overtime with, uh, I think, the last place team, and my coach pulled our goalie uh, in overtime. In lacrosse, you can throw the ball down the floor. You sure no, can. There's no icing. So um, it was an interesting tactic. We scored, thankfully, but uh, that was the only other time I could relate. And on the bench, um, I guess no one really realized until we had to figure out what lines were going out. And someone, I think it was me, actually, I said, what line's going out? And Boomer didn't say anything, so I just said gray line or like gray power play. Let's go, let's go up, and then they went out. And I think they scored, so it worked. But we got we got to pick and choose, you know, what's more important. Like he was saying, our uh, personal vendettas or listening to the guy that's behind the bench. Well, I mean, and and, and really, what other the other thing that happened, um, um, you know, nothing, you know, that happened, but really. The intensity on the bench picked up. Like I mean, you know, all of a sudden, nah, eh, they're not listening for their names or whatever. Now everyone's a little bit up and going, and you know, there was nothing but positive energy on that bench after that, and, and it kept going. And and you know what? Like I mean, again, hockey. Like it's a we only play fifty two games, which sounds like. A lot but it really isn't but it is a lot and it's a grind and you know you get stuck in a rut and you just over and over and over and uh, I mean to me skating if you're physical it creates your awareness when you're physical it creates energy energy creates um, you know more awareness and where everybody is on the ice and and sometimes when you don't hit and you don't do anything you're just kind of skating around there whatever you lose guys and you you know so anyways i i mean it was good it wor- I, I think it w- worked out obviously well but i was prepared to lose a hockey game for it and you know hey we lose one whatever i mean i think that is more important than actually you know to getting to our goal end that's more important than uh, a win but the boys picked it up and and did it now translating into saturday um uh same great bench but we still weren't we still are in that funk we're not playing the way i need us to play for whatever reason and so i mean you kind of is this really a doldrums time of the year i mean we you know like january february okay you maybe hit that little bit of a wall you know it is and you and you know what i mean uh i think every other team is getting better um and we're the, we're playing the same game as we did all year, um, and you know you can't you can't do that when things are heightened and intensified or whatever. So, I, you, you and we you know unfortunately or unfortunately, however you want to look at it, I mean, you know our last little uh, spell was against Winston Salem, and really against Winston Salem we had one bad hockey game. Um, did we win them all? No, but we played the right way and played well enough to win. And, you know, so I don't know, I guess, you know, maybe we are in the doldrums a little bit, but, um, that's all right. Better now than, uh, uh, in May. Well, that's right. (laughs) That's why, I mean, your point to, Hey, I'd rather take the loss now than you don't want to pull that second weekend of April. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, and not to like, I mean, uh, I mean, everybody handles pressure differently and, not to put pressure on us, but I mean, I know last year the pressure was on us to uh, get to that second place and and have have a first round uh, have a first round kind of buy, uh, so we didn't have to travel and this and that or whatever. You know, the pressure now is to you know 
continue that and and stay where we're at we're in first place like i mean uh we're in first place uh and we want we want to have home ice advantage throughout the whole season or throughout the whole playoffs so you know that's that's what i'm putting pressure on as far as that goes and you know hopefully it happens Let's take a quick break. We'll come back here with more in just a moment. We are broadcasting live. It's the Behind the Bench Coaches Show presented by Mike Hostelow Law, and we'll be back with more in a moment. Welcome back on the Behind the Bench Coaches Show presented by Mike Hostelow Law. Tom Callahan here broadcasting live along with River Dragons head coach Jerome Bichard and this week's player guest, is Michael Greco. And uh, guys, we were talking a little bit about the weekend set with Binghamton here and now looking ahead. Motor City, 3-3, three and three, first of all. Uh, not the easiest thing in the world, uh, but, uh, you know, and a little bit of travel thrown in there as well. And, uh, I mean, boom, tough weekend setup coming up. Yeah, you know what? I think, uh, uh, you know, they beat Carolina the other night, uh, I think 5-0. Five, five nothing. Um, you know, I think Carolina came back and, and uh, redeemed themselves, but... Uh, they got a good hockey team. They got uh, they work hard. They uh, play the right way, and um, you know there's really I don't think they have anything secretive about them. But they just play hard and and go to the net and and do all the little things right, um, which we need to replicate. We need to do the same thing. They got a really good goalie. Um, he can be a hothead. We got to get uh, to him early, and then maybe accidentally bump into him a little bit to you know get him. Get him, uh, you know, get his screws loose upstairs going, and uh, and then uh, hopefully the train will fall off the trolley tracks. I always used to tell guys when I was playing, and it never bothered me because I expected it, but I said, if you want to find out if the other goalie is a head case, put one by his ear like first shot. Just go in and blow it right past his ear and just see what he does. Well, I don't think we have a see problem with that. I don't think we'll have a problem with that. I mean, uh, that's half where our shots go. Uh, <laughs> But, yeah, but it's got to be within a foot. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I think I think with us traveling, I think with us traveling up there, I think it's important for us to uh, traveling and then probably not having a, a skate, a pregame skate up there either. Um, you know, we're just going to have to get there, go to the hotel, get a good walk, get a good meal, get a little exercise in us or whatever, and then. Uh, you know, start of the game. I mean, we don't want to play this way the whole game, but I mean, I think the first ten minutes, just over the red line, dump it in. Um, less is more. Less tic uh mistakes in the neutral zone. Just get it in, and go to work, and get a four check going. Get that established and uh, get ourselves into it uh, that way. And I, I think that'll give us uh, a really good opportunity to get our legs going and get into the game, and and hopefully. Get, get the first one. Rex, how do you as a player deal with that? The long bus trip up, maybe no chance to skate. Like, how do you get it going? Uh, the no chance to skate part's kind of tough. I, like, get my legs going in the morning, and then we uh, go back to the hotel, unpack, and then we go for lunch, and then I have my nap. That's usually my ro- routine, uh, pretty much, um, when we're on the roads. Uh, but it's going to be a little bit different this time, so we might have to, like he was saying, just go to the hotel, unpack, um, I don't know, I might go for a long walk or something. It's going to be cold up there. I'm kind of back in my element, not going to lie, being a Canadian boy. So I love the winters. I love the cold. So um, It won't be that cold up there. It'll be just nice. It it'll should be, be cold. It'll be comfortable. It'll be know. nice. Check the forecast. It'll be, I'll, I'll enjoy it. I would, think, sure. I would think <clears throat> it's probably 35 to 40-ish. I don't know what that yeah. is. Shorts weather. I don't know what that is. <laughs> That's five. You know, five. Maybe, oh, that's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect go. weather. Five, six, seven degrees mm-hmm. Celsius. Uh, that's unreal. Um, but uh, you know what I mean? <clears throat> in uh, back in the day, you know, we used to anything over anything over six hours. We traveled the day before. Yeah, you know, um, some sometimes you had a sleeper bus, sometimes you didn't. We have a sleeper bus. It's a hotel on wheels. Uh, is it the most comfortable thing? No, but it's better than a cedar coach, and you know, it gives you guys, uh, gives the guys a chance to stretch out a little bit and all that stuff. So it, it's not ideal, but I mean, it is what it is. And then, really traveling at night. I mean, uh, we travel at night, hit less traffic, leave at seven o'clock our time, be there at eight o'clock their time, and yeah, it's all right. I can definitely confirm it's better than traveling on a coach bus. That's how I spent at least the first 
seven or eight years of my minor league career sleeping with my butt on a cooler in the aisle of the bus and just feet on one pair of seats, head on the other pair of seats, and then, you know, hope yeah. the guy across from me was sleeping on the floor. Yeah. No, but they, uh, Motor City, uh, I mean, again. You guys are spoiled, Grex. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that, but I mean, uh, uh, no, but Motor City, we haven't been there. Uh, I, the the arena actually looks pretty cool. I mean, uh, the ice surface looks uh, normal size and, uh, you know, anyway, so it's something to go see a different building and go from there. You know, it's funny. You say that like, almost kind of in passing, but it's true. A lot of these minor league buildings, especially the old ones, were built before there was a standard. You know, 200 by 85 is kind of something we take for granted now look at all the shiny new nhl buildings but i mean back then might have been 160 165 could have been 180 mm -hmm. it's whatever they built well and then if you look at all the other or all the other buildings in our league i mean i think uh, this one it looks like regulation ours is regulation um you know danbury tinier rink <coughs> even winston-salem smaller uh smaller than normal it's got a small neutral zone uh which plays an advantage to them because, you know, their timing is on and we're off a little bit just with, you know, our, the D zone, D zone and the offensive zone are probably the same, but the neutral zone, you, you, your timing's off, your, you know, uh, all that stuff. So that changes, it's a little nuance that, uh, that uh, you know, is a benefit for home teams. And then, uh, Greg, do you have a preference? Like, do you like a bigger rink, smaller rink, don't care? Well, with the way I play, I like a smaller rink. I can hit everything that moves. It's not. It doesn't take a lot for me to travel from guy to the eye. So, um, <clears throat> kind of growing up too. Um, there's a lot of smaller <clears throat> rinks in my area. So, especially this one in Brampton, uh, it was probably the smallest rink you'll ever play in or ever see. You can dump it in anywhere, and it doesn't feel like an icing at all. So, I'm used to smaller rinks. I don't mind them whatsoever. Um, big rinks I like too because it gives me more time to to move the puck and skate with it if i want uh but i don't <laughs> uh, we're, we're working on that we're working on that i'm trying a little bit more here and there so uh but yeah smaller ranks i i, I don't mind at all so i gotta ask you about the hit military night when you defenestrated <laughs> that player and uh which means to throw somebody out a window but i mean that is is that probably the most fun hit you've ever gotten to throw in your career uh honestly with that many people there um it was it was insane. I've never done that before. I've never put a guy through the glass before. Um, I don't know when my legs get moving. There's a lot of weight behind me, so I, I don't I don't see you know that ending well for a guy if I hit him against the glass. So well, all the hits that uh, Grex has uh, uh, handed out this year, I mean, there's not one that's illegal. Well, I mean, everything you know. I think he's been called a couple times on it, but I mean, on average, I mean, shoulders are down, dude. You got to pick your head up. I mean, uh, you got to pick your head up, uh, and that's a lost art. There's not very many people that do it um, are able to do it anymore. So, I mean, it's definitely a, a positive. I'm sure if they don't know, I'm sure they will know <laughs> fairly soon <laughs> that, that, uh, Hey, you're coming across the the middle, you know, I'd be thinking twice about getting your shot off because it's gonna, it's coming. You are nudging that soapbox closer and closer to me right now. Boom. Because I'm going to hop up on it and say, they don't teach kids how to hit properly anymore. And they don't teach you how oh, yeah. to take a hit. More importantly, everybody turns away. That's the problem. That's up, the problem with USA hockey, contact. Canada hockey. I mean, you know, we were hitting when we were eight and nine. I mean, we were, you know, mm -hmm. da our dads taught us how to do it properly, shoulder to shoulder. You know, hey, get down or whatever, and all that stuff. And 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 then on the other side, we were taught how to take it too. So nowadays, you don't start hitting until you're almost midget, for God's sakes, and, and now you're hitting 14, 15, 16, you're hitting puberty, you're all growing and gangly, and you have no control of your body half the time, and, and now you're going to you know, introduce that to the game? Totally agree. And some kids at 14 and, and 15 are way stronger than others. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And then, then you throw in the fact, I mean, heck, when I was starting, I, I mean – 
I can't even remember if we started with a face with a fa uh, a full mask on. I mean, I, at some point we we did, but I mean, the same thing. I think uh, the kids nowadays are they're so well equipped, and nobody nobody looks where they're going. Nobody's doing this. They're indefensible. Nobody has any uh, control of their sticks. Like there's you know, heck, when I was little, hey, <laughs> if I hit somebody, somebody. I, eight and nine year olds going to the hospital for stitches you know you know so there's a certain amount of respect there is no that's not taught anymore so um anyways it's I, i'm right with you tom good soapbox it is a good soapbox and i'll hop on it every time like i have no problem getting up there i just i really think that it's not there so and grex when i see a guy like you with the timing and Vanelli actually threw a nice hip check earlier this year that I thought was pretty outstanding. And we, you never see hip checks anymore. But I've seen you stick the hip out there a few times. Is that just an instinctual thing, or did somebody kind of teach you how to do that? Um, I don't know. Just kind of back on what you guys were saying. Like, I grew up, I think, at eight or nine learning how to hit because uh, it was, like, put into our system in, in Canada anyways. Um, thankfully, I was the last age group in canada to be able to consistently play like play with contact because the uh, the kids younger than me so the 99s uh were on and off constantly every other year because they were trying to figure out the rules uh, which can kind of mess with guys and, and learning how they hit and whatnot like sure. when you're younger you're you're not going to get hurt as often um because of how you know how young you are you're growing your, your body's more flexible than it is now um bones are softer yeah <laughs> yeah right. and uh so you can get not get away with stuff, but when you're younger, but like an accidental collision doesn't hurt as much back then when you're eight or nine compared to when you're 24, if you don't know how to hit. Right. Um, so I never really kind of got taught how to hit. Uh, I more so just, just learned the angles uh, and the timing through junior and minor hockey. And I just kind of, I always wanted to make it annoying and hard for other guys to play against and not want to come down my wall. Um, I've been a D-man my whole life, so just something that my dad said like I gotta use to my advantage because I'm not the tallest guy, but I was always one of the stronger kids on the ice between both teams. So he just said always use that to your advantage, and I have been. So okay, well <clears throat> let's uh, let's grab a break here, and when we come back, Greg, we're gonna talk to you about learning to play, where it mm -hmm. all came from, where you started, and then we're going to get into this coming weekend a little more in Motor City. And we're going to talk about Legends Weekend coming up. The St. Patrick's Day game is right around the corner. So stay tuned. We'll have some information on those for you. We'll be right back. This is the Behind the Bench Coaches Show presented by Mike Hostelow Law. Welcome back here on the Behind the Bench Coaches Show presented by Mike Hostelow Law. Tom Callahan joined by River Dragons head coach, Jerome Bichard, and this week's player guest is Michael Greco. And uh, Grex wanted to talk to you a little bit about how you got started way, way back when you were baby Grex. Who put you on skates first and uh, who was most instrumental in your development? Uh, I think it was my dad. Uh, my dad uh, had two, um, like, right off the boat immigrant parents from Italy. Um, so not a whole lot of English was spoken in that household. Um, he kind of learned it growing up in school and whatnot. Uh, so he never had the chance to really play hockey. Um, he did, you know, get the opportunity to try out here and there, uh, for the travel with the really travel ways at the time, uh, the junior A team in that area. And they actually won a lot of championships in whatever time period that they played in. Um, he never played anywhere. Uh, so I guess he just wanted me to kind of have that opportunity that he didn't get. Um, and I just loved it. Started at three years old or three or four years old. Um, did those little figure skating classes, where you dressed up as like a bumblebee or something for your final thing <laughs> nice. and, and uh, had your coach and stuff show you. So that's how I started. And Immigrant Greco, is that uh, Greek? No, it's Italian. Italian. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so I just started with that and, and then it just picked up. I started playing summer hockey, uh, mixed in with lacrosse. Um, and then I kind of found my, I kind of got off the trail of playing hockey and, um, in the summer anyways it was just strictly lacrosse kind of gave myself a break and then we i guess minor hockey i was in a really a kid pretty much my whole life until trip the triple a programs in the area started uh getting popular um so that was a thing and i think the first time i ever got actually noticed for playing hockey was in minor peewee or major peewee 
Um, I actually had strep throat, so I couldn't try out for my local AAA team. Um, but uh, a team in Newmarket, the York Simcoe Express, actually, they gave me an opportunity to try out. I made it. They were a top 10 team in Canada at the time. So uh, I went from a, a team that lost every year, maybe won one game a year, to winning 40-plus games a year. So uh, I got noticed in a tournament in Detroit and then started playing summer hockey with um, – uh, a lot of those kids from the New Market Aurora area, uh, and then it kind of just picked up from there. And my love for the game grew and grew each year. So that's uh, kind of my younger story, anyways. Interesting. And so I know a lot of guys. You get to a point, you have to kind of decide how you're going to continue on. Is it college? Is it juniors? Is it both? Mm -hmm. um, you know. And then the decision to turn pro. Take us through that part of it. What went through your mind? Um, I was actually done. I quit hockey after my major, would have been major, I don't even know, major midget year. Um, that's what it was. Major midget year. We hosted the, the Ontario championships in Aurelia and we lost in triple overtime. And I figured I was just done. I was going to take a new, new route with, uh, maybe school. Uh, I don't know, try that out. But, um, I actually got called by a, a local junior C team. Um, for my 16, 17 year old year. And I tried out in the summer, kind of got the love back for the game. Uh, and then I made the team, had a great year as a first year of junior. Um, I was playing against men at the time, uh, cause I was 17 playing against 21, 22 year olds. Uh, so it was a big adjustment for myself. Um, and then after that, uh, I tried out. For the they're not a team anymore. They were called the Ancaster Avalanche. They're called the Hamilton Kilty Bees now. Um, I made that team, and then that's kind of how I developed. That was probably my favorite year of junior. Um, I had uh, Ryan Kuwabara as my coach. He was the uh, captain for Team Japan in the Olympics. Um, I don't know how long ago, to be completely honest, but I uh, scored I think their only goal in the Olympics. Um, so he was very knowledgeable and he kind of taught me a lot of stuff when it came to that, uh, especially in the D zone. Um, so my defensive awareness and, and positioning kind of grew there. And then my plan the year after that was to return to uh, Ancaster, but something to do with uh, import rules or whatever. So I got traded to Caledonia and Brantford, which was my most fun year of junior. I had a blast. Uh, we weren't good. <laughs> we weren't good at all, but it was a blast. The, the guys on the team were phenomenal. Um, I got asked to leave at the trade deadline to a, a you know, a, a team that was going to go far in the playoffs. And I said, no, because of the guys, it was just an unbelievable year. Um, and then after that, I figured I thought I'd give it one more kick at the can with uh, trying to get a scholarship or some sort of like uh, youth sports or CIS opportunity. Um, so I made the Burlington Cougars junior A team, um, and had a pretty good year. Uh, and I know in the, it's the OJHL, it's, it tends to be a lot of school directed NCAA kids. Um, and it's a very skillful league. It's, there's not a lot of grit at all. Um, I don't know what it is like now, but when I played anyways, there wasn't a lot of, you know, banging bodies and, and gritty hockey and so I think that's what my coach at the time was looking for and he gave me a shot as a 20 year old and uh it paid off um because I kind of just bullied everyone to be completely honest um there was a lot of guys thinking they could stick handle and do certain things when they couldn't and I just made it aware that when I'm on the ice it's not going to happen uh and then I got a couple uh NCAA division three offers uh at a showcase thing that we had and then right before playoffs, I actually got a really, really bad concussion that um, should have sidelined me for about nine months, 10 months, uh, but it was my last year of junior, so I didn't want to um, watch playoffs, especially with the team that we had. We had something special going on, uh, so I played, which was stupid, but I played. Um, went to game seven. Uh, game six, I actually scored to tie it to send in the overtime we won so game seven didn't go our way um and then i had an opportunity to go to the university of waterloo um 
to play U sports as well as those NCAA offers. But the concussion was so bad that I just I had to, I quit. I quit hockey. I was done. I made it aware that I was I was done. I was gonna just maybe stick to lacrosse or coaching. Um, and then that winter, that following up winter, I actually um, coached a minor midget team in Aurelia, and uh, I think I think we lost two games all year. We won the championship. That was a COVID year, so we were in the final uh, series of playoffs, and uh, and then COVID canceled it, but. The team that we were going to play didn't really have a chance, to be completely honest. So we won. It was fun. It was a great thing uh, personally for me to, to develop young young men uh, in their games and kind of just show them the right way, to not to play, but to act as a hockey player. Because obviously as a hockey player, there's all these personas that you know people look at you as, and you can either accept it or go a different way with it. And I showed them that you don't have to be that, that dude or that guy. Um, so it was a cool thing for me personally. And, uh, and then I got a phone call to go to Sweden and (laughs) this part of the story for me seems out of left field. It was, uh, it was weird. Yeah. Like I didn't play hockey for almost a year. Um, I got a phone call. I guess I played junior with LaBelle actually a little bit. I was missing the game a little bit. Um, so I played with him. And then after that, I thought I was like actually done, completely done, like no more hockey. Your story has a lot of I thought I was done. Yeah, to I, it. honestly, a, it's it, crazy. I thought yeah. I was I thought I was done a couple times uh, with the concussion because I was afraid of getting another one. Um, and then I thought I just had to make a different, you know, life plan. I thought hockey was done, like hockey couldn't be there forever. I could take a different route with coaching, maybe. And then, like I said, I got a phone call to go to Sweden and it was during COVID and there wasn't going anything going on in Canada. So I figured why not? Sweden was open. Uh, so I went, played seven games and unfortunately COVID took over Sweden and canceled our season there. Uh, and then I went back the following year, actually had a really good year. Uh, and that's how I met one of the new guys, Kyle Moore. Um, uh, I met him. We played together for about 10, 15 games and then he moved up to a uh, division. Um, and finish the year there but I was planning on going back to Europe this year and then Jay Krupp called me so and then here I am that's kind of my my story in a nutshell anyways so that's a really big nutshell yeah that's a, <laughs> yeah. That's a global nutshell and <clears throat> you know it's kind of interesting hearing you talking about trying to you know shape these young men while you're coaching them and boom, I hear you talk every week about this is like your thought process too. And I can't feel like there's some serendipity here. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, Again, I mean, life isn't about me. It's about everybody around me and how do you make, how do you, what's your contribution? Um, And you know, Hey, knock on wood. I mean, I think, uh, I I don't know. I've seen it a a few times. You know, what are people going to say about you when you're, when you're gone, when you're done? Mm. You know, that's important to me. You want to hurt me? If you want to hurt me personally, don't punch me in the face. Think I'm a bad person. Think I'm a mean, bad person. That hurts me. So, I mean, now you know my Achilles heel. There you go. (laughs) That's right. Uh, I mean, um... You know, and then just, you know what, I mean, uh, you know, give back. The, this game has <coughs> given so much to me. So many people have had influences on me, uh, positive and this and that. And it's our time to give back to to the, the young kids, um, you know. And you know what, it, and especially in Columbus, I mean, and back home and where you were at too, you're kind of a big deal. You play junior wherever, you're kind of a big deal in town. And, you know, you don't know how big of an impact you can have on that 10, 12, 14 year old kid, um, boy, girl, whatever. I mean, you don't, you just don't know. Um, and it means something and it doesn't have to be anything, uh, grand gesture ish. It might be just something like, I mean, I remember going to church every Sunday, you know what, as a eight, nine year old, you know, Catholic church, right. You go up for communion and whatever, and you're on your way back and you're supposed to be walking, walking, you know, you know, kind of hands hands together and and down or whatever and you look up and you see 
this uh, one of the <coughs> one of the older uh, older guys. He noticed you and he gives you a little wink. I mean, it seems not like nothing, but I mean, I remember that to the to this day. I right. mean, you know. So, right. anyways, you know, that's it's it's interesting too. Like uh, I remember <coughs> as a kid, of all the random things, I met Bruce Smith at a Pizza Hut, the the Hall of Fame Buffalo Bills defensive end, and uh, it's just the nicest guy. And it was like the week before the AFC Championship game. He was just he had to come inside to get his pizza back then. You know, they didn't bring it out to you. <laughs> But he came and he sat down on a bench. And I just remember my dad was talking to him about knee injuries because my dad had had a knee surgery. And so he was talking to Bruce about knee surgeries. And and he's just like, yeah, I went over and just met him and, you know, shook his hand and my hand, like tiny little hand disappeared in his. And it just it, like things like that. It's like I just remember Bruce Smith sitting on a bench at Pizza Hut, yeah. you know, but he part of the community. And yeah. you, you don't think of that, but that's exactly what it is here is like you guys, you know, Grex, you're out grabbing a a slice of pie somewhere and uh which i'm going to ask you because you have an italian family uh, and your <laughs> thoughts on that um but i mean you know that's you don't realize that impact it's uh i kind of noticed it actually a lot more this year it, it's not really a big thing in sweden we didn't re really do community events at all um like at all actually uh but here just i think the first one i did was going to a school uh and talking about um just being a good person and saying no to drugs and you know like that type of talk and the amount of kids that lost their minds just for us four guys in a, in a jersey that showed up was insane and then throughout the year I've seen those kids after games asking to get stuff signed and I remember you you were at our school you talked about not doing drugs blah 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 and it's those kids will remember that and it's it's funny actually i pulled this up while you guys were chit-chatting uh, i got a message the other day from a guy when i was in ancaster um i uh separated my shoulder right before playoffs and we had to go around walking uh through the community just uh kind of just letting people know that playoffs are starting and there was this little kid playing ball hockey by himself and i had nothing better to do i was shoulder was separated why not I started playing ball hockey with this kid for 15, 10 minutes. And he actually messaged me the other day. He's 15 now. I think he was like eight, nine at the time. And he, uh, he just asked me how I'm doing. Uh, and, uh, he wanted an update on where I'm playing hockey. And I asked him, you know, if he's still playing hockey and whatnot. So that was something cool. It's funny that you guys brought that up. So I thought I'd just throw that in the mix there. Um, yeah. That's what it's all about. Yeah. That's it. And then you throw in a couple wins, win a championship, it makes it even better. Makes it all worth a uh, while. Yeah. Well, hopefully this year's squad gets a chance to do that too. Well, uh, we're, Fingers on, crossed. Uh, yeah. we're on the right direction. Yeah. We're on the right direction. Yeah. So, still some work to do. And there's still some show to go. So we're going to take a break right now. When we come back, we will uh, talk a little bit more here on the Behind the Bench Coaches Show. And uh, we've got a big weekend coming up against Motor City. And then – Back home, the weekend of March 17th, obviously Friday, St. Patrick's Day. Saturday is Legends Night. We're going to discuss that in just a moment. We'll be right back. Back here on the Behind the Bench Coaches Show, presented by Mike Hostelow Law. Tom Callahan here with you and joined by River Dragons head coach Jerome Bichard and this week's player guest is Michael Greco. And uh, So, all right, Boom, we need to talk about this. We're looking ahead a little bit here, but St. Patrick's Day coming up on the 17th, Friday, and then and it's a three and three with Mississippi, but Saturday night is Legends Night. I have so many people asking me about Legends Night, talking about it coming up. They're fired up for it. Um, I do want to mention uh, and just put it out there in front that there's so many legends coming back this year that you guys are actually going to field two teams, not just one, but two. Yeah, it's kind of funny. People get uh, fired up to see a mid-aged uh, <laughs> the old men get back mid-aged uh, out of shape uh, guys but they love it play. they love it no you know what uh, uh, I feel very blessed to be able to still even get out there and do what I do um, with our guys coaching <coughs> but uh, you know playing men's league or whatever it's I you know you know I think it's the, still the greatest game no matter what and uh, anybody can participate and, and do all right and 
Let's talk a little bit about uh, not worrying about the format or any of that stuff coming up. But I mean, uh, who are some of the guys that fans can expect to see? Well, let me put uh, let me pull up the roster. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got my glasses on. All right. I mean. You know, so, you know, it kind of goes all the way back from my playing days. We got uh, uh, Dougie Mann, Tom Wilson. Dougie Mann is on the mend. He just had hernia surgery like five weeks ago, so uh, um, he's making excuses uh, how good he's going to be already. Uh, Tom Wilson, um, uh, a fine young uh, uh, firefighter in town now and uh, used to be a heavyweight in the league. Uh, Ryan Haggerty, um, fellow from Saskatchewan. We won championship with him in 04, 05. Uh, Tommy Top Gun McMonagall. Uh, uh, he's out in Texas nowadays, but uh, he'll be back. Levi Lind, uh, local firefighter. Uh, Jimmy Carestes, Derek Crimmin. It's my North Carolina crew. Uh, we're missing uh, one guy from North Carolina, Ryan Akey. He will not be able to come, but... Uh, um, Tom <coughs> Maldonado, local guy, uh, Roman Marikoski, uh, Andrew Lowen, the wobble goalie, um, Alex Toline, Andy Bathgate, uh, grandson of the Andy Bathgate, yes. yeah, yeah, best hockey name, I believe it's pretty sure. Dot that uh, roster, you know. Then we got a couple uh, River Dragon legends thrown in there: uh, Zimlika, Lenartson, uh, Levi Armstrong, uh, Farmer. And then we have uh, Carlisle Lewis, uh, Brad Prefontaine, um, Oren Hergott, Sam Bowles, uh, Brett Hammond, Kevin Kessler, uh, Derek Marchand, kind of my era, um, Darren McCoslin, uh, East Coast League, uh, Ian Vijay, um, MJ Graham, Andrew Cree Love, Jordan Braid, Brent the Hitman Taves, which uh, Grex, you could probably take his uh, nickname. Um, <laughs> Uh, Seth Gustin and then Brad Prefontaine. So, got two teams, uh, about 15 guys apiece. I'd like to think maybe guys would want about 20, but uh, um, there's plenty of ice time, and uh, you know, all the guys are really jacked up about uh, coming back into town and seeing everybody. And I do want to mention that you get in with your ticket to the game. Everybody is invited to come down early and watch the game on Saturday. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I think would five or five thirty. We're gonna start five five thirty, I believe. Uh, still working on. I, I I'm pretty <coughs> sure uh, Bruce Garber, uh, former uh, head coach of Cotton Mouse, and then uh, Phil Roberto, uh, former general manager. Uh, um, Phil hasn't. Get, I, I I called him the other day, and I think uh, they, he lives in Birmingham. So um, I'm I, I'm thinking him and Mary are gonna come down, and Bruce is still in town. So. Um, I believe those guys will be uh, coaching Team Roberto and Team Garber uh, is kind of the game plan. Sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. It'll I'm be looking fun. forward to it. It's a lot of work putting, uh, you know, kind of sure. try to get these guys. Uh, and, again, I feel like it's training camp all over again. Like, I mean, I don't know if Michael Greco is coming unless he's, <laughs> I see his eyes, see his eyes, right? <laughs> um, you know, and you know what? Nowadays all these guys have families and, and life going on, so, you know, they committed in coming, but who knows? I mean, it, hopefully everything works out and uh, uh, they get here, but you never know, but uh, it's always fun. Greg, so I want to know, are the boys going to be watching close to see what Boom still brings out there? <laughs> I don't know. We get a little preview of practice sometimes, the, the down-the-wall <laughs> slap shot. We love that. Uh, we haven't really been talking about it, but I'm sure we'll be out there watching the game and, and see what happens. So. No, I, I, know a couple <clears throat> of year, I, I know a couple of years ago, I mean uh, – Dougie and I usually get in a tussle. Tom Wilson and uh, Carla Lewis get in a little tussle and, you know, uh, play fight. All of a sudden, one punch goes awry and you actually <laughs> tag a guy and somebody's bleeding and I'm just playing around. And then all of a sudden, Dougie Mann starts really throwing, like, lefts. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, 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 dude, it was an accident. I didn't mean to cut you open. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and then Whoops. you and then then you go in a locker room. Then you go to locker room with our guys, uh, like the old Cottonmouth guys. That when I was coaching, they're like, "Dude, I thought you guys are buddies, man." I'm like, "Yeah, that's what we do. That's how we played." And you know what? It doesn't hurt. I'm like, "You guys could probably do a little bit of that." And and those guys aren't your buddies, so let's. Uh, it's kind of funny, but yeah, it's. Uh, I actually played goalie 
in a Predators Blues alumni game. Mm. I was the Predators goaltender in that, and I got hit by John Wensick. Oh, nice. He parked himself in front of the crease, except he didn't stop. <laughs> he came in, turned his took us around right at me, and just kept backing in and just bowled me over. I'm like, I thought we're this is a friendly game. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so I, I completely understand. But I, I think it's going to be so much fun. I'm looking forward to it. But I think it's going to be amazing to, to watch that and see it if you're a fan of any era of Columbus hockey. And hockey has been here for a long time. Right. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's good. And, uh, again, I think it's good for our guys to see, you know what, these guys are the ones that built this. And we're right. a part of all, all this. And for them – to come back after 20 some years and then you know 10 or whatever pretty important like some of these guys that are coming back they met their wives from here they got family here that don't live here anymore or they don't live here anymore but this is where it all started from um so uh, you know everybody i talk to like uh, you know young guys that are i'm recruiting i'm like you never know why you're here you might meet the most important person in your life, whether it's hockey related or whether it's business related afterwards or family related. You meet your wife or, or this and that. So you just never know. Absolutely. So uh, tickets are on sale now, Ticketmaster.com, and, of course, the Civic Center box office. Grex, I told you we were coming back to you for this before we go. I mean, I trust an Italian guy's opinion on food here. But give, give me either your favorite, whether it's an Italian restaurant or maybe a pizza place, or give me a spot that you like to go. Uh, there's a pizza place I had actually. Um, I don't know the exact road. I know it's off of Whitesville. Uh, it's near the CVS. It's just tucked in a little plaza there with like a 24 hour fitness place, a little Asian food place too. I forget what it's called, but I had a pizza there and it was absolutely phenomenal. I, I give it the thumbs up for sure. Okay. We're going to have to track that down. Yeah. We'll figure that one out. For so. sure. All right. Well, <clears throat> We come to the end of another week, guys. Appreciate you being here. No worries. You, you bet, Tom. We'll see you uh, tomorrow. Yes. And we'll see you on Thursday on the bus. Good Lord willing in the creek down the rest. I know, I know. That's, uh, yeah, I can't wait for that. We're driving up to Motor City this weekend for a three and three. So, all right, fellas, thank you so much for being here. And we'll be right back to wrap things up. This is the Behind the Bench Coaches Show, and it is presented by Mike Hostelo Law. All right, back to wrap things up here on the Behind the Bench Coaches Show, presented by Mike Hostelo Law. My thanks to head coach Jerome Bichard and defenseman Michael Greco joining us on the show here this week and a uh, fun you know it always goes so fast i know it's an hour show but it goes so fast and so thank you to everybody for listening in to this one and uh you know what looking forward to this weekend set with motor city as you know coach said everybody's improving uh and every team is is catching up to you if you stay the same if you're the team that fails to improve you're the one that everyone's going to catch and I think the River Dragons are, are you know, facing that right now. They've been on top all year. You have a bullseye on your back. Every time you go into an opposing barn, every time you see another team come back, and those teams are getting better because they know you are the team to knock off. So we'll see how it goes this weekend. As I said, it's 3-3. Three and three. There have been a couple of start uh, changes. Saturday's game is now a 6 p.m. start with a 5.30 pregame show. And Sunday, don't forget, we're springing ahead, uh, is now 2 p.m. Eastern time on the start. So, again, Saturday is now at 6. Sunday is now at 2 p.m. against Motor City. And then Friday, St. Patrick's Day, specialty jerseys. We're back in the house. There's going to be a, a pregame party. We're going to enjoy that and have a lot of fun with that. And then Saturday is Legends Night, and you'll get to come down with your game ticket. You can get in, see the game early. And look forward to having everybody down for the weekend set. Thanks for joining us, everyone. This has been the Behind the Bench Coaches Show, presented by Mike Hostelo Law.